the Chinese manufacturers are absolutely outraged at the legacy banking system. I mean, they're, they're, they have to wait between six and eight weeks for payment, and they have to pay on the order of $100,000 to a bank just to channel the payment. Bitcoin just erases that. Right. And it's interesting because these small companies are taking on these banks. And I, I worked in the banking industry for nine years. And it's the constant innovator's dilemma. The young company wants to try it a new way. The old company wants to save and protect your profit margin. Right, right, you right. You don't right, even right. do it. You don't even really think about it. It's just like the banks don't want to move because this is a great business to be in. And right. Then the, and, and the young guys are trying to change it. The Bitcoin people, that kind. Now, and the banks probably don't even recognize it until someday Obviously. they'll buy the company. Right, or Exactly, exactly. I mean, capitulate. I mean, you, you have this, you have this heavily regulated finance uh, b banking industry, right? And along comes Bitcoin, and it becomes this clash between what you can do and what the regulators think you can do, because the regulations were, were set up to prot to protect the consumer, but that was four decades ago. Right. So you have this, you have this paradoxical situation where the regulations are actually preventing innovation. It's it's like Uber in Paris. The, I mean, the taxi company. Yeah. Or Taxi, similar to taxi company. So Uber's trying to, to make uh, taxis uh, available to everyone, and then right. in Paris Ex they're running up against taxi legislation. Exactly, so, exactly. Okay. And in Paris, they, they, they've so outcompeted the legacy taxis that they actually were struck with regulation saying that they may not pick up a passenger until 15 minutes have passed from the, the taxi call. So they have to wait by the curbside for 13 minutes before they can pick people up. Yeah, and that's Paris a way. Is old school. Right, and and that's a that's like how these old regulators see how they are leveling the playing field with the old inefficient dinosaurs, whereas in reality they are preventing innovation, they are preventing progress. So this is where I see Bitcoin Bitcoin coming in because they don't basically care about regulation. The exchanges, the bridges to the old system, are affected by regulation, but you can't really regulate. Uh, once you go all Bitcoin. Right, now Bitcoin, now, so you, you've been upfront with us, you have a big position in Bitcoin, you put all your money in Bitcoin. Uh -huh. It's it's almost hit $1,000 of Bitcoin it is, in the it last is. few days. It's gone up quite a bit in the last- Actually, it's past 1000 it bucks. So it's it's gone four or five times in the last month or two? Or, um, or three well, times? It, well, it, in it's October, tripled. it was at 109 uh, at its bottom. So okay. it's, it hit 1070 today. So it's practically- a tenfold in uh, slightly less right. than two months. And one of your Twitter followers uh, tweeted out some tweeted out some today said, uh, "At what price will it, will it remain stable?" And you, you said something like between two and five million dollars yeah. of Bitcoin. Yeah, that's what okay. I estimate. Which I mean, most month. people would fall off their chair hearing two to five million dollars uh, of Bitcoin. But why why do you say that? And uh, why is that possible for evaluation? Well, I mean, <laughs> a lot of people are just seeing the charts and thinking how high it'll go. But what I'm doing is ca counting backwards. I mean, this is a transactional, this is a transactional currency and it is a store of value. As such, it is a product and a service competing on a very tangible market for stores of value and for transactional currencies. So what is the, what is the size of that market? Right, and this and is important. How, and how much, how big a market share can Bitcoin realistically take within a, a uh, foreseeable time frame? Right. When you ask that question, then you come up with a with a market cap of Bitcoin total, and then you divide that by the number of Bitcoin in circulation by that by your estimated time, and seeing how Chinese are buying Bitcoin like crazy, I actually had to adjust this number upwards, but then you come up with a number of about two to five million dollars okay. per Bitcoin. Now there's about 21 million Bitcoins currently outstanding. There right. will be 21 million Bitcoins outstanding at the end. Okay. Today, we have about half of that, about 12-ish. Half half because when I used to hear about the Bitcoin story, I mean, I did the same math you did. When at $100 at $100 of Bitcoin with, say, 10 million outstanding, that's like, what, a billion dollars of total capital. I mean, that's mm -hmm. not that's not even the market cap of Apple. That's a hundredth of the market cap. So I was like, this can't exist because it's, it's not big enough, like you said, to be a, a... But when you start getting up in the numbers you're talking about, you're talking about trillion dollar... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to replace the national trade. Right. So it has to get that big in order right, to be right, a exactly, real currency. Exactly. And since it's infinitely dividable, it doesn't it doesn't really matter the actual number of bitcoins. Is it doesn't it? in the slightest. I mean, you're going right. to be dealing in micro bitcoins before soon. So whether they're 10 or million or 100 million or it doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter. I mean, you're it's divisible to easily divisible to 16 decimal places today okay. and you can extend that as as long as you right. want.